Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in this video, we're going to classify different types of unemployment. So in the last video, we talked about calculating unemployment, defining unemployment, but now we can look at some different categories of unemployment. And so the first one here is frictional unemployment. And this is temporary unemployment or being between jobs. For, so for example, you go to college, graduate college, and then you're looking for your first job, that's frictional unemployment. Or, you know, you don't like your boss, and so you quit your job and you go looking for another one. That's frictional unemployment. Just typical in-between jobs, looking for a new job, that kind of a thing. One specific type of frictional unemployment is what we would call seasonal unemployment. And that's unemployment due to the time of year or the nature of the job. So, for example, if you're a ski resort worker, and it's the summertime, you might be seasonally unemployed because there's not as many people going to ski resorts in the summer. Or if you're a lifeguard in the winter, not a lot of people going to the pool in the middle of the freezing winter, so you're seasonally unemployed. A third type is called structural unemployment, and that's unemployment resulting from obsolete skills. So for example, if you're a VCR repairman, not a lot of people are watching uh, the old Disney VHS tapes like I did when I was a boy. And so those individuals are going to be structurally unemployed. And this happens because the structure of the economy has changed. And so some skills that used to be in demand are no longer in demand. And so people have to find not only a new job, but a whole new line of work because their skills are now obsolete. And so that's one of the major issues uh, in macroeconomics is how do we move people from jobs in which the skills are no longer needed to jobs that are growing and thriving. Finally, there is cyclical unemployment. It's one of the four major types and it's unemployment due to a bad economy. So when the economy sucks, firms tend to shed jobs. They tend to lay people off, fire people, because they simply can't afford to keep them on as workers. And so that's cyclical unemployment. It gets its name from this idea of a cycle of the economy going up and down, positive growth, decline. And we'll talk more about that in another video. But an example of cyclical unemployment is the stock market crash of the late 1920s, when the stock market uh, basically tanked, people lost their fortunes, lost their jobs, went into poverty, and macroeconomics was born out of that event. Uh, more recently, the uh, Great Recession of 2008. So, you know, we can go ahead and bring in that word recession when an economy is um, basically having negative GDP growth, when the uh, gross domestic product is declining. Again, cyclical unemployment. A lot of people are going to be losing their jobs due to the bad economy. While not a type of unemployment, a very important concept uh, is this idea of the natural rate of unemployment, which gets at the idea of what percent unemployment is a good unemployment rate. And the answer is somewhere around 4 to 6 percent. This is the amount of unemployment that is healthy for an economy. We measure the natural rate of unemployment as the sum of frictional and structural unemployment, either people who are in between jobs or people looking for a whole new kind of job because their skills are obsolete. Now, you may be surprised that the natural rate of unemployment isn't like 0%. Like, why would we want any unemployment? Well, think again about these categories of frictional and uh, structural unemployment. We want people to switch jobs if they aren't happy in their current job because they'll hopefully be more productive in their new job. And we want some structural unemployment to move people to jobs that are growing and thriving and areas of the economy that are producing a lot of output so that we can have a more thriving, successful society that has a very high standard of living. So you want you want people to have the freedom, and maybe sometimes are kind of forced to, in the case of structural unemployment, to move them to the place they want to be. Now, you will note that there is one type of unemployment that's not included here, and that's cyclical. 
Because remember, seasonal is a part of frictional unemployment. Cyclical unemployment is not a part of the natural rate. And cyclical is kind of, is a symptom of a bad economy, right? And so it's cyclical unemployment that is kind of the quote unquote bad unemployment that we need to get rid of, right? Because for example, if the natural rate's 4% and then we have a cyclical unemployment of 2%, we're really dealing with 6% unemployment, which is just, you know, to the edge of what is considered healthy, right? So by trying to eliminate this 2%, we can move the economy back to that 4% that is healthy. Now, the opposite's also true that if there's like no cyclical unemployment and then we have a natural rate of somewhere around 3%, then maybe having a little more frictional structural unemployment, allowing people more freedom uh, to move jobs will get us back to where we need to be. So it's kind of this Goldilocks situation where you don't want too much unemployment, but you don't want any like you don't you don't want there to be no un unemployment and then people kind of being stuck where they are and maybe even doing jobs that the economy simply no longer needs. Finally, connected to the natural rate of unemployment is something called the full employment output or sometimes just called full employment. And that's the GDP when the economy is at the natural rate of unemployment. So for example, if there's 5% unemployment, which is right within the natural rate, and then there's a value of GDP of like, you know, $2 trillion, then that $2 trillion is the full uh, employment output as measured uh, in dollars, as we talked about in a previous video. I will tell you that full employment output and the natural rate are really, really, really important concepts as we look to explain how to fix a bad economy, an economy that's not working, and also how do we get long-run economic growth, as we'll discuss in later videos. So that's all for this video on types of unemployment. Until next time, have a great day.